What the? Who are you? Who are you? I asked you first, punk. No, I asked you first. You didn't ask me first. No, you idiot. I did. Yes, I asked you first. Did. Hey, now you're really pissing me off. Okay, fine. My name is Joshua Lapunk. What? No, I am Joshua Lapunk. No, please stop copying. No, you're please. the one who's copying me. Stop copying That's me. Wait, what is that? Hey, 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 easy, easy, easy. We, we, we can talk about this. We can, hey, hey, I, I can explain. I can explain. I can explain. I can explain. I can... Help! Okay, last time. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. My name is Joshua Lamar and welcome to our second video. Well, that escalated quickly. That's why you shouldn't do drugs, otherwise you're going to be seeing hallucinations of yourself or other people doing some sort of random things that could ruin your life completely. But enough of the drugs issue. Let us talk about lectures! <laughs> it's good to be back. Basically, I had to teach this student one time, and this student prepared a piece by Mendelssohn. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I teach Mendelssohn. I know how to teach Mendelssohn. And like, Mendelssohn is my shit. You know, this is cool. This is cool. So I was like, yeah, bruh, show me what you got, bruh. And so, but then all of a sudden, when I first heard the opening of this piece, Mendelssohn copied John Williams! So then my student was like, really? Mendelssohn copied John Williams? Then he said, Mendelssohn died in 1847. And you're telling me that he came to the future and copied the guy who wrote Harry Potter? Damn, I never knew you were that stupid. At that point, I was so offended. He called me stupid, so, the, so I was like, okay, 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 and I am stupid, so let me research the crap out of this shit. Today's lecture, I'm gonna uncover and present to you all the compositions that are copied, plagiarized, and stolen. When I was doing my research, I figured out there were so many compositions that copied the classical music, and they're commonly film music. basically copying other people's compositions. This is basically plagiarism. But there are films with classical music in the background and some of the, these music became famous because of the film. Example, like the Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. But let me tell you this story. Basically, I was a fan of this piece. It's basically a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach titled The Goldberg Variations. However, there was one time when I watched this film, The Silence of the Lamb, starring Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster, and I really liked this movie. Like, it was actually the first time that I ever enjoyed a horror movie. So then my next reaction was, hey, I want to watch the second part of this movie. Immediately, I watched the next film titled Hannibal. So I was excited to watch it. And when I watched it, <laughs> I regretted it. I regretted it so much because of that brain-eating scene. I will not show you that scene because there are young people who are watching this lecture. But I wanted to say that this scene 
really gave me trauma because they played the golden variations in the background while a human, a human, eating his own brain. At that point, I really, really, really hated golden variations, even if that was one of my favorite pieces. <laughs> I hated classical music in films because it just changes my pure imagination. But of course, one of my favorite movies with classical music in the background is a really old film by David Lee, The Breathing Count, which basically uses the Rahman of Pichai number two as a background music for the entire movie, for the entire film. It's one of my favorite music and my favorite movie. For this case, it's a complete different scenario. So there are movies that uses classical music that were already composed in the past, and they use it sometimes. But in the case of the originality in film music, what is the acceptable criteria of copy and plagiarism? Remember my seventh lecture, The Power of the Parody? I briefly talked about the meaning of the word parody while I had to talk about the meaning of the word pastiche. Pastiche is, in my, in my definition of the word pastiche, is kind of the same way of saying stealing. Because stealing is a terrible word. In fact, it's an Ill illegal activity. Therefore, they made a fancy version of this word called Pastiche. In film industry, there are many filmmakers who use the pastiche technique, as I said from the seventh lecture, Quentin Tarantino. But there are other movies, not only Tarantino, who also steal other people's ideas. One of the most famous examples is the movie The Untouchables. This scene has talked a lot. When it comes to parody or pastiches, they always talk about that scene. So basically, all artists that I mentioned here, all avoiding this word, one particular word. Thieves. These artists are thieves. The best way to describe a particular person who is stealing something is a thief. Then yes, people who do pastiche is a thief. Then what's a consequence towards thieves? Are you serious? You seriously don't know what's gonna happen if you become a- You go to jail! Dude, think about it! You made your own expensive ass jewelry and it's super shiny, super sexy but someone has stole that jewelry and said that it's theirs. But why does artists not get arrested? Well, actually, <laughs> there is a way of escaping this kind of situation. Let's just say I am writing a new piece of music and it is a new work, but I have copied some part from Mozart. That is copying. Mm -hmm. Of course, it, like, but you know what? I don't care because he's a dead man. He can't do anything, you know what I'm saying? That's why this is called the public domain music. The owner of public domain is basically everyone. So then, which song? is a public domain? Well, it depends. It depends in some countries, but the simplest way of saying this is a song that is written between 50 to 75 years after the composer's death. As I said before, Rachmaninoff Pinchot number 2 is one of my favorite pieces of art, and I'm still playing that piece. That's how much I love it. Rachmaninoff is a great example when it comes to copying other composers or be copied by other composers in some cases. But the most famous example in this piece is of course the first theme of the second movie.
young I never needed anyone And making love was just for fun Eric Carmen himself also admitted that Rachmaninoff is one of his favorite composers. And Eric Carmen made his own composition with that theme for All By Myself. Should we complain that Eric Carmen is a thief? The funny thing is, I believe Rachmaninoff also copied from other people's works. Do you know where I assume? First of all, Beethoven Sonata is in C sharp minor. Rachmaninoff second movement is E major, which uses the same key signature basically, the same triplets in the same beginning, and they are both in the same tempo marking. Adagio sostenuto. And the thing is, nobody cares because of that public domain issue. And the thing is, some people assume that the, the copy version or the plagiarized version or the, the pastiche version of it is better than the original. And I think it's basically the battle between whose song is better. Here's an example that I really, really wanted to talk about. Rachmaninoff has written a piano and orchestra piece titled Rhapsody on the theme of Paganini. Which is originally written for violin by Niccolò Paganini. And he basically copied that same theme and did it in his way. This piece is basically a variation. So basically, he copied the same thing and makes his own variations out of that same thing. If you listen to the 18th variation, Basically, it took me ages to figure that out because it just sounds like a complete different music. So I was trying to figure this out and eventually this was my conclusion. In order to make something different, first of all, he changed the tempo. Andate Cantabile at the walking piece while he was singing stuff. So it is slower than the original because the original is quasi presto, kind of fast. And he changed the key from A minor into D flat major. The dominant note of A is D. Therefore, he brought in semitone lower and even gave the first note as A flat. Just like in his theme, where it begins with the A. But instead of ending on the E, he leads it to the tonic note, which is D flat. And if you look at the rhythm too, he basically flipped it upside down. Rachmaninoff copied version, but in a different variation with the same theme of Paganini Capriche number 24. This is why I like Rachmaninoff so much. If you have written a piece of music that sounds exactly like that original music that you have copied from, for that situation, you must get an F. Even if that is a song that is part of a public domain or non public domain. But if you compose something that you have quoted or mentioned that you have copied something but sounds completely different and if it sounds better than the original, success. So if you have seen a composition that has been copied and I mean clearly, obviously, well shown, black and white copy, you have a definite permission to shove that piece of music right up their ass. <laughs> If you disagree or if 
you have any other topics that you want me to talk about, leave it in the comment down below. And I'll see you in the next lecture. My name is Joshua Wan Parking, and as always, take care.